this book has ruined everything. Before, I found myself to be a pretty smart man. Now I find myself to be a bumbling idiot. A moron who can't do anything right. This book has destroyed my intelligence. I never wanted to read it. People kept insisting that I do this. I read on, I torment myself. But no one else has done more than Ranging Ramsey. He is the one who insists that I read this. Who insisted that I torture myself. He's the reason I've gone insane. <laughs> and now, he too will join me in the madness. <laughs> Greetings, Internet people. Randy Ramsey here. And um, before I get into the topic, I want to tell you, if you haven't paid attention to what I told you to do and go watch... Sarkin Tars, let's read the Sarah Palin memoir series, and you really, you really should go and do that because it's, it's just getting, it's just getting a lot funnier. Each, each bit just got a little bit more of an interesting, kind of twist to it, and I, I'm finding it more and more entertaining. So, if, um, if you haven't done that yet, you really need to. Um, which kind of leads me into today's video. I've, I've been, I've been wanting to do this one for a while. She was one of the first people on the list. But then shortly after I made the list, he kind of started doing this, so it kind of made me want to hold off and let him finish what he was doing. And then, but I just can't, I can't help myself anymore. And so, you know, today we're obviously, we're doing the, um, we're doing People I Wish Would Go Away, and the focus is Sarah Palin. And there are really a lot of reasons why I wish this particular person would go away. And, god damn it, I hate when I forget to turn my phone off. What is this? Hey buddy, I'm in the middle of something here. Do you mind waiting until... Hello, Ranting Ramsey. If you hang up, I will kill you. Well, who the hell is this? You don't recognize my voice? It's me, Sarkintar. Wait, Sarkintar? How did you get my number? I have my ways. Now listen to me very carefully. If you want to live, you're going to do exactly as I say. Well, yeah, well, I, I thought you were a Christian, man. Whatever happened to thou shalt not kill, you know? Um, besides, you know what? I think you're bluffing. I'm, I'm looking and uh, I don't see anything. Or anyone. So Maybe this you know. will get you to believe me. Consider that a warning shot. Okay, what the hell, man? Out of all my fans, you're the one who's driven me to the point of madness. You have no idea how bad it is. Well, well, of course I do. I've been following all along the whole time. But were you there when I had to read it? Before I made the humorous edits? Before all the shots I made at this book? It's not that easy. I've become a wreck because of you people. And of all my fans, you're the one who pushed me to do this the most. And now you're going to suffer with me for the conclusion. Well, what do you want from me, man? I promoted the series. I told everyone about it. I even, I even own that little bitch who complained about it on the one video. But what about all the psychological damage I've had to deal with? Do you know what's happened to me? In reading this book, I've suffered migraines from stupidity. When I complete binges of vomiting for just how sick the book made me. But guess what? That's not the worst part of this whole thing. The absolute worst part is that my mental state of mind has been completely destroyed. For example, people would ask me stuff like, do you love your girlfriend? And I would say, with all my heart. And now when they ask me those sort of questions, I look at them and say, you betcha. <laughs> you what? It's not funny! <laughs> you heard exactly what I said! Okay, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry! Then prove it. You have two choices. You can finish this book with me, or you can die. Okay, okay, I'll do it. Just, just give me a minute to get ready, alright? Alright, fine. 
But don't try anything funny. Now, Ramsey, prepare to suffer as I have suffered for the past few months. <laughs> I can't believe we're actually doing this. Hey, you pretty much asked for it. What was what? That, like, bleeping sound when I said <laughs> See, there it is again! Oh, that's just the sensor bot. Don't mind him. But, I, you know what? I'm not even gonna ask. Let's, let's just get this over with, please. Alright. Chapter 6. The Way Forward. With another quote. Sarah's not retreating. She's reloading. By Chuck Heath Sr. There's some kind of innuendo? Oh god, I can make so many jokes about that. My last trip to Fairbanks as governor was pretty magical. We spent the busy three weeks finalizing the smooth transition of power. Then we filled the motor home with the kids and coffee and headed up to Fairbanks where the Par Palin Parnell administration had been inaugurated in, New in Nanooks Hockey Arena? Nanooks? The Nanooks, yeah. The Nanooks Hockey Arena. I thought they were the Canucks. That's Canadian. Alright, so where was I? The late July weather was perfect, and thousands of Alaskans and tourists were there to enjoy the ceremony. A number of Alaska reporters who made the trek to the Golden Heart City told Meg they wanted to say goodbye and expressed concern that they would be out of a job once we left. Does that count as a complaint? Or just kind of a cheap joke? No, I don't really think that's a complaint, because she wasn't the one really saying it there. She was saying that they were saying it, so okay. I'll give her, we'll give her a buy on that one. Apparently, we were good for business. What about that one? I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of confused how they would possibly be good for business, but... Eh, yeah, we'll chalk it up. Bing! And really, that got, that's got to be the nicest compliment you can give to the pro-free market fiscal conservative. Yep, that's definitely a complaint. Oh, yeah, so we're, yeah, there it is. Okay, yep, there we go. So that, that's the aforementioned one, yeah. All right. In my farewell speech, I reminded Alaskans of how we moved the state north to the future, as our motto says. Is that Alaska's state motto? North to the future. It might be. I have to profess a slight amount of ignorance in that regard. Oh, well. I said goodbye to the governor's office, but hello to new opportunities for the people. Like a reality television show! But that's only a myth, right? Right? That's only a myth. Yeah, that can't possibly be happening. Yeah, thank God. <laughs> what was that about? You're not saying... No, they didn't really. No, they didn't. No, they couldn't have. I got to thank the state I dearly love. Our drive back to Wasilla was full of cranked up southern rock music. Oh god, Remex. Why do I see like a Disney traveling montage in my head right now? <laughs> and we stopped along the highway to roast hot dogs and make s'mores over a campfire. Okay, it's like a Robin Williams Disney movie montage. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Oh god, I just figure pictured Robin Williams as her husband. Ah, bad idea, bad idea. I need to stop talking. <laughs> oh, God. Our drive back to Wasilla... Oh, wait, I just read that. I'm an idiot. I took a few minutes to tell my family how much I appreciate them riding that roller coaster with me, and that we looked forward to driving down the road to wherever it was ahead. Whatever was ahead. Since leaving office, I was frequently asked, What does Sarah Palin stand for? What's your vision for the future? I welcome the opportunity to share. Keep in mind... Oh, God. I tell my parents the greatest gift they ever gave me, besides, a building a besides building a foundation of love for family and for healthy competition, was an upbringing in Alaska. How's that a great gift? I don't know. I've heard it's really nice there in, the, in the, their summers. But it's boring, and isn't it dark there for like six months? Maybe I'm just not uh, I think that's a slight exaggeration. I know that it's very, it's like dusk, I think. I don't know. I've never really been there and have no desire to go. Yeah. 
All right. Uh, da, da, da. I'm an independent person who took the good fortune to come in an era of Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher. What is her weird obsession with Margaret Thatcher? Seriously. Margaret Thatcher on a cold winter's day. Maybe. Huh. I am a registered Republican because the planks in that party's platform are stronger than any others upon which to build Alaska and America. I disagree with some of the characters in the party machine, but the GOP stands for principles that will strengthen and secure the country if they are applied. Yes, we must tax the poor. Give tax cuts to the rich, though. That'll help. That's why she's supporting the Tea Party and not the GOP. Exactly. I'm not obsessively partisan, though, and I don't blame people who dislike political labels. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just choked on some coke. Not excessively partisan, my freaking <laughs> aneurysm. Do I need to call 911? No, no, I'm good, I'm good. Continue. But you see what I mean? This is what I had to go through. This is what I had to go through. Uh, I'm not sorry yet, though. Oh, you will be. And I don't blame people who dislike political labels even more than I do. Yeah, you do. My husband, for example, isn't registered with any party for sound reasons, having been an eyewitness to the idiosyncrasies of party machines. I also don't like the narrow stereotypes of either the conservative or the liberal label. But until we change the lingo, call me a common-sense conservative. What? Does she believe that dinosaurs and humans existed at the same period in time? Raptor, raptor riding Jesus. Apparently so. Common sense for America. Yay! What does it mean to be a common sense conservative? And no, that's not me asking a question. She writes that. At its most basic level, conservatism is a respect for history and tradition, including traditional moral principles. Like what? I do not believe any more moral, certainly no better than any other, than anyone else. Uh, wait, what? I do not believe I am more moral, certainly better than anyone else. And conservatives who act holier than thou turn my stomach. But with the preaching and the... the uh, aneurysm. Are you sorry yet? And guess what? This is only the third page! Onward, into oblivion. <laughs> so do some elite liberals, but I do believe in few timeless and unchanging truths, and chief among those that man has fallen. This world is not perfect, and politicians will never make it so. Well, no agreement there. This, above all else, is what informs my prog pragmatic approach in politics. I wouldn't call it pragmatic, I would just call it... stupid. Yeah, pragmatic, I think, would be giving yourself way too much credit. Yep. In the book, A Conflict of Interests... Oh wait, I skipped a paragraph. I am conservative because I deal with the world as it is. Complicated and beautiful, tragic and hopeful. I am a conservative because I believe in the rights and the responsibilities, the inherent dignity of the individual. In the, his book, A Conflict of In Visions, Thomas Sowell explains the underlying assumptions, or visions, that shape our opinions and the way that we approach social and political issues. He identifies two separate visions, the unconstrained and the constrained. People who adhere to the unconstrained version, the label applied to them as liberals, believe that human nature is changeable, therefore perfectible and that society's problems can all be solved if only the poor, ignorant, disorganized public is told what to do so, and rational plans are enacted. Wait, is that a complaint or a compliment? I think it's a complaint on the media. I think it's an attempt to... No, I don't think it's a complaint at the media. It's like, is that a bad thing that they want to do rational plans? Right, that's what I was thinking. It seems like the, it was an attempted dart the uh, opposing political view, but Phelan Phelan strikes again. <laughs> it's like, yeah, they suck because they want to do rational plans. I, I, oh, crap. 